We face four historic crises all at the same time. This is going to take bold, creative federal action. Use your full authority. The people of this nation have spoken. Now the work of making that vision is real. Now that the disastrous presidency of Donald Trump is likely coming to an end, Joe Biden will get the chance to make good on his promise to create bold change in the lives of all Americans. On his first day in office, Biden says that he plans to roll back many of Trump's signature policies with his own sweeping executive orders, and he has promised to transform the economy to fight climate change, reassert America's diplomatic and military power abroad, and establish new federal offices like that of a national supply chain commander to centralize control of commercial industry in response to the coronavirus pandemic. What is our mandate? We're going to make historic investments that will seize the opportunity. This will go down as one of the most progressive administrations in American history. It's unclear what Biden will ultimately be able to accomplish as president, but he has already spent 44 years as a senator and then vice president trying to bring transformative change through federal action in response to supposed crises. And his record on issues including immigration, the drug war, criminal justice reform, and foreign intervention has been dismal. How can he really be a progressive and want to lock these people up? And I'd say lock the SOBs up. Now, we can find some fringe folks, libertarians and left-wingers in my party who say, no, nah, that's not what we should do. But politically, that consensus has been arrived at. As the president-elect pushes a new ambitious agenda, it's worth remembering the impact of the far-reaching laws he has repeatedly helped pass, which have created enormous suffering and exacerbated some of the most critical problems still afflicting American society. We have predators on our streets. Increase the penalties. Increase them. I would put the son of a gun in jail. Put them to death. We have to hold every drug user accountable. Because if there were no, uh, no drug users, there would be no appetite for drugs and there'd be no market for them. In the 80s, Biden sought to escalate the drug war beyond what Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush had called for. The president says he wants to wage a war on drugs, but if that's true, what we need is another D-Day, not another Vietnam and co-sponsored legislation that locked up tens of thousands of predominantly young black men for minor crack possession. Five years, no probation, no parole. If you have this much, lock them up and put them in our prison. In the 90s, he led the charge on a massive expansion of the death penalty. A wag in the newspaper recently wrote, Biden has made it a death penalty offense for everything but jaywalking and the militarization of law enforcement. Let the FBI agents buy weapons as powerful as the drug cartels had. They're getting beat up. I wrote the original bill that started this whole process, the so-called Biden crime bill. The 1994 crime bill, along with several other pieces of legislation Biden pushed for, expanded mandatory minimum sentences, created three strikes laws, and drove up the local, state, and federal prison populations. Biden crime bill. The Biden crime bill. The Biden crime bill. Every major crime bill since 1976. Every minor crime bill has had the name of the Democratic senator from the state of Delaware, Joe Biden. In the 2000s, Biden played a key role in expanding warrantless surveillance. Just to set the record straight, almost the same thing that got passed, the Patriot Act, was introduced by me in 1994, including um, the wiretap changes and the rest. Starting disastrous foreign wars. Saddam Hussein is still seeking the accumulation of weapons of mass destruction. I do not believe this is a rush to war. I believe it's a march to peace and security. And building fences on the Mexican border. I voted for a fence. I voted for 700 miles fence. Biden's only solution to critical issues over nearly five decades has been to grow the federal government in an attempt to remake society for the better. In reality, his agenda has destroyed vulnerable communities and eroded civil liberties. The whole our media accountable is um, something we all desire, but uh, there's a thing called the First Amendment, which is read in a way that I think is a little excessive. Though today his policy priorities have again shifted with the Democratic political wins, what has held constant is Biden's commitment to bold state intervention in more areas of Americans' lives. These are interlocking crises of our time. It requires the president to defend us from every attack, seen and unseen, always and without exception. And he's never stopped telling us that it's all for our own good. The African-American community stood up again for me. We've always had my back. And I'll have yours. They are in jail. Away from my mother, your husband, our families. And my daughter will be safer. My wife will be safer. My mother will be safer. And I will be safer. 
and I will be happy. Don't shoot! Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. No, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. Because here's the deal, guys. We decided we were going to change the world, and we did. We did. We finished the civil rights movement to the first stage. The women's movement came into being. So my message is, get involved. There's no place to hide.